Ciao a tutti, my name is Stefan and today I'm gonna take a photo which is nice but with boring colors to a dramatic black and white one. Just using a few modules and also my dodge and burn presets which I'm gonna share later with you. But let's get straight into the dark table. And here I am in the dark room interface of uh, dark table. Now for this tutorial I'm going to use a photo I made in Munich, Germany along the Isar river with a nice subject but a washout sky and sort of flat colors too. As you can see from the history I've done already a couple of minor changes, the perspective correction and the crop and rotate which is pretty typical when you do photos into a CD. With a similar photo usually you have two possibilities, you have a change the sky and import a more interesting one because this white washout sky is not really the best. Or you can convert the photo to black and white and make it more dramatic, which is today's tutorial. And in true honesty, even before taking this photo, I was seeing the place in front of me with black and white eyes, thinking already about the processing. And that's the best, you know, when you do photos, you think already forward on what you can do with this photo in the editing software. Now, just for the sake of uh, changing the sky, I want to show you just a quick edit I did. I imported the sky here and I work a little bit on the colors and this is the end result. You see how different is this photo with an interesting sky in the background compared to absolutely washed out sky here. Now, let's go back to my photo and uh, the first model I'm gonna use is the color zones here on the top and I'm gonna activate it and I'm gonna use a preset which is already there, the black and white film. But we desaturate all the colors. In fact, if we go into the saturation tab, you see that they are all desaturated. So why do we use the color zone? Because the great advantage of color zone is that in the lightness tab, you can control the brightness of parts of the photo based on the original color in that part. For example, if you have a blue sky here and you wanted to make it dark, you just take what it was blue here before and you just increase or decrease. Obviously in this photo you can't see much of a change just because the sky was originally white. But let's go to the photo that I changed here with the imported sky. So if I go in black and white, black and white theme, now I want to dark up the blue sky, what I do here, I just take it down and you see that um, I'm darking up only the part which was originally blue and not the other parts of the photo. I personally find the color zone modules to be the most effective for dark table black and white conversion. And now let's go back to my photo and the next step to the conversion is to add a little bit more contrast to enhance the details from a, an otherwise sort of flat photo. And the local control module does the job perfectly here. So I can add more details without pushing obviously too hard. So I go into the local contrast and I activate the module and you see that already some of the details came up and I can increase a little bit here the detail to add even more. Now, if the sky is too bright, like in my case here, I suggest using a gradient filter with a parametric mask in the exposure module. So I activate the exposure module here. I just probably go down to one and a half stops, minus 1.5. Let's see if it works fine. Yeah, it's quite dark and it's probably what I want for this photo. I can add the gradient filter into the parametric mask gradient here and I place it around here which is slightly on top of the buildings but in doing that you see that also the dome has been a little bit darkened up so I use the input slider and select only the brightest part of the luminosity range and in doing that basically I'm gonna take out the application of the gradient from the dome and you can see even better that if I show where the mask is applied here just tune a little bit and this should be fine you see that even within this window the sky has been selected but not the dome of this cathedral in this process you may experience some artifacts like on the top of the dome here I can see straight away but let's deactivate the mask you see this white line I'm gonna zoom in it's a bit annoying but you can fix that pretty easily with the favoring radius so you increase just a tiny bit and it's gonna disappear 
The important thing with a Fabian radius is that you don't go overboard, you know, and you go maybe to 80 or more because then you get a white line all around the building. Based on my experience, usually value between 5 and 10 works perfectly well, sometimes even less. I think for this one probably a 4, it works absolutely fine. Here it is. And now let's go back to the whole image and I want to apply here a little bit of a vignetting and, and there is a vignetting module obviously in the dark table which is very very useful for that. However, it can be quite tricky sometimes to use it if you work full screen because it's hard to change the overall size and I'll show you straight away what I mean here. Let me close this one and just look for vignetting module. I activate it and you see that the circle is going outside of the photo. Now if I want to work on that in an easier way I go on the small size photo and then I just change the oval to work perfectly for my kind of image. And you see that after the vignetting is applied the attention goes straight to the subject. In this case are all of the building and the cathedral here. I just move back to the old photo, fit to screen and that's pretty much it. That's where we started. That's where we are now. At this point the photo may be too bright or too dark but really is correctly exposed so it's now time to add a new instance of exposure module to correct the overall brightness like in my case it's a bit too bright so I go on exposure and I create just a new instance. I probably want to dark it up about one stop or a little bit less than that let's go to maybe 64, 84 yeah, that looks perfect to give a little bit more of a dramatic editing to the photo. I am now in the editing part of the photo that I like the most. This is where we add the magic with the dodge and burn. And the photo, you know, if you check it, is not as dynamic. It lacks a bit of in the change of tonality. It's all a little bit too grey. We need to dodge here and there and add one or more center of attention. And I have built two presets called Dodge and Burn in the basic adjustment module. Let's go there and you see that there are presets for Dodge and Burn both in black and white and color. So let's get the Dodge and Burn in black and white. And by the way, you can download these presets from a link into the video description. The dodging preset, as you see here, just increase the exposure by 0.70, add some contrast and most importantly change the mask blur to 100 and the favoring radius to 120 and you can see that down here. If you don't do that, you will see a clear border between the change that you perform and the remaining part of the photo. I just need now to select the circle with the control button click on the circles in this way I don't need to go back and forward every time I get the circle so I can start dodging here and there for example the church here and a little bit more on the top of the dome and maybe a little bit here You may want to use the same technique to also burn part of the photos in case you want to dark up and this is not the case of this photo. You may also want to add a second instance of dodge and burning for example for this church here but that's easy to do because you can create a new instance on basic adjustment and then you can again select the dodge um, brush here and I then again select the same circle with a control button I work just on the church. It's a little bit like painting, isn't it? And that's the beauty of dodging. I can even tiny bit increase the exposure there and that's pretty much it. What's the technique that you can use when uh, you apply some dodging and burning? I personally try to create a sort of a triangle, a little bit of a story here. I don't want to have the photo which is all grey, I need to have a little bit of chiaroscuro here. So a little bit of change of tonality to make it a little bit more dynamic, if it all makes sense. And that's pretty much it about the dodge and burning. Let's see before and after the dodge and burning, so this is the exposure module, apply and then I do the dodge and burning. 
you see after the dodge and burning that is more of a dynamic photo compared to a flat one black and white the last step i suggest is to change the black and white point if you want to make it even more dramatic and to do that you go into the rgb curve so let's get the module you activate the module and once you have activated the rgb curve you just need to drag right the black point and left the white point so i just go a tiny bit here and a tiny bit here again like in any change in dark table do subtle change and not dramatic one because if you change really in a dramatic way obviously the photo may be either too bright like in this case or that too dark if i go down and that's pretty much it with the rgb curve you see before and after now I want to do a before and after with all photo just to show you this dramatic change once I move to black and white. And let's see a uh, before and uh, after. Before flat, after much more dramatic. And that's pretty much it about this video. I hope you enjoy this conversion to black and white in a dramatic way. I use the Dodge and Burn, which is one of the presets that I like the most. You can download that. You have the link into the video description. And I see you in the next video on Darktable. Bye bye. Ciao.